friends! Today we are talking about narrative focus. Saying that makes me feel very professor -y. So the thing that got me thinking about this was actually my recent rewatch of the 2010s hit series Pretty Little Liars. Okay, now stay with me. If you weren't around for the phenomenon that was Pretty Little Liars, B-L-L, Plil, if you like, it was the absolute hit show of the time. Based off a book series by Sarah Shepard, it was, in essence, a soap opera. And it knew it! Plul was the campiest, goofiest, most unrealistic murder mystery that could never exist outside of wild imaginative fiction. I was in high school at the time, and it meant the world to me. For a show about lying, the thing that kept me coming back was actually the honesty that the girls had with each other. That was the crux of the story, their friendship. And the show knew that. The focus of the story was always the friendships between the girls. Not an authentic portrayal of high school or crime or even grief or fear. It had one specific focus, the friendship. And everything else was allowed to be broad. People make fun of that show for the absolutely unhinged plot lines, but that's what the show called for. It knew that. You know, maybe the girls were spending more time in the coffee shop than in the classroom and contouring while having mental breakdowns, but that is what made it delicious and digestible for the audience. The show knew what it was trying to be, at least from a focus standpoint. It kept the focus on the girls' friendship allowed everything else to be broad. If the show wanted to be more realistic, if its aim was to be a literary show, then it would need to be much more focused. The girls wouldn't have one crisis thrown at them after another in every episode. It would probably feel much slower and much deeper, focusing on the real emotional experiences of just one crisis and the effect that that would have on every aspect of their lives. Like a real person might experience. How that crisis would continue to affect them into adulthood, as crises tend to do. In some literary parallel universe of this show, the girls would have acne and eye bags and only four pairs of pants that they cycle through every week. In other words, it would be an entirely different show. Not worse, just different. It would have a different focus. A different intention. The focus would be deep rather than specific. Like the focus on the girls' friendship in the actual show is very specific. Even while the rest of their world is absolute clown shoes. Focus, I have realized, is something that I've really been struggling with in my own writing. If you've been following me here for any length of time, you've probably heard about my many years of rejection with my novels. Five of them, all rejection. Five novels, not just five rejections. My most recent novel, Making the Rounds Through the Query Trenches, has gotten the most interest by far, but it still always ends in rejection. And for a long time I've been trying to make sense of the feedback I've been getting on that novel. I'm trying to organize it in my head to figure out at least, like, what am I doing wrong? Like, what could I prevent myself from doing in the future? And really just recently, as in like this past week, I think I've realized that my problem is focus. The most recent book that I've been querying is The Young Adult Mystery. It's a contemporary story set in the real world, so not a soap opera. But I think what I'm realizing is it still might be too focused for what it is, a mystery. The story, when I was writing it, was extremely focused on the internal world of the narrator and how she feels and relates to other people. And even though it wasn't my intention, I think it initially came out to be a work of literary fiction set inside mystery. Like the mystery was part of the setting rather than the story itself. And I know that can work, but it also has to be intentional. Like, I needed to be intentionally writing a literary mystery, and I wasn't. I was just trying to write a mystery. But almost all of the feedback I've gotten from the publishing industry is that the story isn't mysterious enough. It's not thrilling enough, not tense enough, within the mystery plotline. They always praise the characters and their relationships and the complicated relationships that the characters have, but not the mystery. And I think they're always disappointed by that because it's pitched as a mystery. Because that's what I wanted it to be, that's what I still want it to be. But all of the revisions I've been doing lately have just felt like patches. Like I'm sticking in these random thrilling elements into this literary story. Just trying to bulk up its mysterious vibe. And every time I do it, I feel like I'm getting further from the story that I was trying to tell. And it's the problem. I don't know what to do. Should I put the story away? Just chalk it up to experience another practice novel? Is it a pitch problem? I feel like it's not a pitch problem, but maybe it is. Maybe I'm pitching it incorrectly. Is there a way to pitch a more focused literary mystery? I mean, surely there's gotta be, but I don't know. I don't know. Is there no market for that kind of book? I don't know. I have been feeling lost. And now I've been realizing that my problem is focus. I still don't know how to fix it, but I think I've identified at least the problem. A, a massive broad problem that um, possibly has no solution. At least for this novel. Just I'm really also starting to think that focus is something that an author should think about, like, before even writing their first draft, or at least during the first draft rather than waiting until they get so far into the story like I did and realizing that they have a problem with focus or that the focus of the story is not what you intended. 
For example, a thrilling genre mystery, The Da Vinci Code by Dan Brown. The focus of the story is broad. It's one crisis after another. Consistent running and hiding and problem solving. It's not about the emotional depth of the characters. The lead character, Robert Langdon, literally never changes throughout any of the books. He's the same Robert Langdon that he was at the beginning of the first book as he is at the end of like the sixth or seventh book or however many books are in that series. I've read them all. They're still excellent stories. Obviously, they're like the world's best-selling story. I love them. I have read them all because they know what their focus is. The mystery. The thrill. Versus a story like The Hunting Party, which I recently read by Lucy Foley, the focus of that story is much less broad, but also much deeper. The mystery is built entirely off of the conflicting relationships of the characters. It literally wouldn't exist with any other cast of characters. The focus is extremely tight. Whereas the mystery in The Da Vinci Code would exist no matter who the characters were. And it could still be, probably would still be, a very thrilling read. The focus is much broader not nearly so entwined with the emotional worlds of the character. And I just think that's the difference, or at least one difference, between commercial and literary fiction. You know, we're always trying to decide what that difference is, and here's one. Focus. A literary novel has a very narrow, deep emotional focus that propels and impacts the entirety of the story, while a commercial novel has a much more broad and shallow emotional focus. Not like shallow as in like shallow, but like a necessary distribution of the emotion in order to tell the story it's intending to tell. For example, in the first season of Pretty Little Liars, Plul, where the show is at its most um, a realistic loose use of the word, at least unhinged, um, very mild spoiler here, the first season of Plul. So one of the many many plot lines going on in that season is that Hannah's mom steals money from the bank where she works in order to save their house and pay their bills because they are struggling financially they are in a financial hole ever since um, Hannah's dad walked out. Then A, the series baddie, steals the money back from them right before the bank schedules a meeting with her mom to discuss that account that she stole money from. Okay, so that's the setup. There's this scene that takes place right before Hannah's mom goes into work and Hannah is supposed to go to school and they're both just standing there in the kitchen knowing that her mom is going to be arrested and charged with felony grand theft and possibly bank fraud and all kinds of stuff. Hannah and mom in her kitchen. There is nobody else in Hannah's family. Her mom is all she's got. This is a literal nightmare scenario. A defining trauma that would, you know, be a crux point of their life that would continue to haunt them throughout their life. And this is the reaction we get from Hannah. But remember, this isn't bad acting. This is how it's written into the script. And also remember, this isn't a moment of bad writing. Because this story isn't intending to be a deep exploration into the fundamental emotional experiences of our childhood and how they change us forever as a result. This is a soap opera. One crisis after another. It's a story of fun and thrills and friendship. The only emotional consistent focus is the girl's friendship. That is where the depth is allowed. The show remembers its focus. If this were a literary story, this single plot line of Hannah's mom stealing from the bank would be the entire story. Because that is like a massive event that would take place in somebody's teenage years. It would cause a massive rift, not only in their relationship with the mom, but their relationship with themselves and their trust in the world. That terror of waiting for your last remaining parent to be arrested for a felony that you know they committed and you've been hiding. But in Pretty Little Liars, once this storyline works itself out and Hannah's mom does not go to jail, it's literally just never mentioned again. Hannah never loses faith in her mom's ability to provide for them. She doesn't resent her or struggle to determine right from wrong. She doesn't trust that her own judgment of right and wrong is now skewed forever. That fear of abandonment doesn't warp her view of relationships or inhibit her from forming them. It's just a little thing in her life that they had to fix. And once it's checked off as handled, that's it. There is no lasting emotional impact on the characters. But remember, this isn't bad writing. This is actually very effective writing for the story that it's trying to tell. I loved this show. I still do, and so do millions of other people. Particularly girls who the story was written for and marketed towards. This is a story that understands its focus. And that is so important. That is something that I've only recently realized how important it actually is to remember what your story's focus is. How important that is to effective storytelling, to tell the story that you want to tell. In order for Pretty Little Liars to be effective, they didn't need for Hannah to carry this trauma with her throughout the series because this is like a one minor blip. This is like a realistic trauma in a big sea of just unhinged chaos. You know, and in a similar vein, Arya never holds a grudge against her dad for forcing her to hide his affair from her mom for over a year. There is no exploration into how that forced secrecy affected her ability to trust men, or form relationships, or develop a sense of self. It's just handled and they move on. Because the emotional focus of the story remains on the girls' friendship with each other amid the soap opera events. 
I think this is actually something that gets a lot of writers into trouble. It has been getting me into trouble. You're trying to write a commercial high stakes story, but you don't pinpoint where the emotional focus of the story is, you know, before you start writing, or at least during the first draft. So there is no focus. Either the story ends up with very surface level emotions in all areas in order to make room for the storyline, or the emotional focus ends up feeling weak or unfocused or rambling, too broad, with no, no specific focus anywhere. Like some moments are allowed emotional depth, but it doesn't consistently impact the story, or certain events will carry emotional depth where then other very similar events won't carry the same emotional depth, you know? There is no specified focus because the story isn't written with the intention of maintaining a specific focus. That intention is very very important because otherwise the story just feels like off. I think that if you, the writer, aren't even sure what the story's focus is, then you're going to struggle to both find and hold an audience's attention. That has been my problem. My story, the one I've been querying, is accidentally a literary story set inside a mystery. And that is only a problem because that was not my intention, so there is no consistent focus in the story. No emotional focus. It's all just, you know, piecemeal, just kind of speckled. <sighs> the focus just feels off. The emotional depth feels too deep in some points and too lacking in others because I didn't know where to focus it when I was writing. And now I don't know how to market it because the focus slips and fluctuates throughout the story. It's not consistent because I was never intentional with the focus. Until now, unfortunately. I thought I was writing a commercial mystery, but what I ended up writing was a commercial mystery forced into the emotional narrative of a literary coming-of-age story. The balance feels off. You know, I'm not having any great revelations here. I don't know how to fix my problem. I've just identified, you know, a problem. A big one. <laughs> Potentially an unmanageably large one, but you know, you know, here we are. <clears throat> Lastly, I would like to leave you with what the chapter in the first five pages says on focus. The chapter on focus says, you know what I mean. The most painful of all editing is when focusing a manuscript, as it often demands doing away with perfectly good writing. The edit's principle is this, no matter how good the writing, if it does not further the intention or progression of the work, it must be cut. An unfocused manuscript, then, usually manifests in prose, characters, or events that don't stay on track, that are introduced but never resolved, or, more rarely, resolved but never introduced. It lacks continuity, goes off on tangents, has an overall rambling feel. Another symptom of the unfocused manuscript is beginnings and endings of chapters, paragraphs, even sentences that are not as strong as they could be, that feel slightly off. How can we feel a real culmination if we've ended up where we have through some tangent and not through intention, through progression? Finally, beware the dangers of being too focused. If your manuscript progresses too neatly, is too rigid, perfect, then perhaps you've overdone the focusing and need to allow some room for spontaneity, digression. Don't be afraid, you can always cut the diversions if you don't like them. <laughs> and that is my current problem. Let me know in the comments if uh, emotional focus in a novel is some new epiphany for anyone else, or if it's just me.